Hi, I'm Jim Setzer with Images by Design, and if you follow my YouTube channel, you know that I use these Godox X1 radio creative lighting system devices every day in my studio. I've done a couple of product reviews, talked about the ecosystem in general, and I really, really like this stuff. It, there's a wide range of lights from this speed light all the way up to these large studio strobes, a number of different kinds of triggers for a number of different kinds of cameras and camera systems, including Micro Four Thirds and Sony and Fuji, on top of Nikon and Canon, of course. So it's a great system. But no product is perfect, and the Achilles heel of this system has got to be the firmware update process. <music> some of those nuances so that you can avoid some of the pitfalls and successfully update the firmware in your devices when you need to. The first thing I want to point out is that these devices in this ecosystem fall under two different code bases. I think they may have two different manufacturing facilities that, uh, that produce different products and so there's a version 1 firmware update tool and it'll update the firmware in a select number of these devices. And there's a version 2 firmware update tool, and that updates the firmware in the rest of the family. So depending on what product or products you have, you may need one or two or both of these firmware update utilities in order to update the firmware in your devices when, it, when you need to. Now you can get your updated firmware and the firmware updating tool from a number of different places. You can go to Godox's website and you can download that directly and it shows you this is the G1 firmware family and all the devices that fall under that. Here's the G2 firmware update tool and all the devices that are uh, managed by that. It's a little hard to read, it's a little bit cryptic. I prefer to go to the Flashpoint one for two reasons. One, easier to read if you're English speaking. And two, they furnish the tools as self-extracting archives. You don't need anything extra in order to download this stuff and install it in Windows. If you go to the Godox site, they encapsulate all of their drivers and firmware tools inside RAR files. And those are just a file compression format similar to ZIP, but Windows does not natively support it. So you're going to have to go out and get a third-party compression tool like 7-Zip in order to extract those files and then be able to finally install them on your computer. So, an additional step there. Okay. So, let's assume you've grabbed the code for your particular device and you've grabbed the appropriate software update tool. Before you install that tool, you're going to have to do another very important step, and that is disable driver signing. Now, Windows 10 has brought a number of security enhancements, including driver signing. This ensures that the driver has not been altered since the manufacturer released it. That prevents people from injecting malware into your drivers that can compromise your system. It's a very important feature. But those certificates don't exist inside those drivers, so Windows is going to reject them. Unless you turn off driver signing. Uh, that whole process, it's, it's not hard, but you've got to go through that process to turn that off before you install the firmware update tool. I'll put a link down in the comments on a, a description on how to do that. Okay, so assume you've turned off driver signing, you've got your computer back up and running again, you install the firmware update tool, and now you're ready to go, right? So you go in here and you click on select file, and you find the firmware file that you want to update your device. And it says load complete, Great. Now you want to go plug in your device, but I'll warn you, you've got to use a quality USB cable. The USB chips inside these devices are really picky, and if you go pick a Dollar Tree, uh, Five Below cheap USB cable, chances are it's not going to work. You want to make sure that you get use a quality USB cable, um, something that might have come with a cell phone. Those are usually pretty good quality. Amazon Basics, I find, all work well, other than the bezel on those being a little bit too big and maybe not being able to seat properly. But they do work. So 
plug into your device. You may or may not hear the familiar chime when you plug in a USB device. Uh, what I do is I pull up Device Manager and I make sure that I see Godox USB devices and that there is a Godox USB device active on your, my system. That tells me that the device driver is installed properly and that my USB cable is good. All right. So next step, click this connect button and it's going to confirm that the device matches the firmware that you've loaded up in here. Great. The last step is to click this update button and I'm going to upgrade the firmware from version 1.9 to version 2.1 and it's going to erase fail. Okay. Okay, I updated that USB cable, tried it again, and this time the firmware update passed. Let's see. I'm going to just confirm it. I'm going to put some batteries back in this. And on this particular device, I hold down the mode button while I turn it on, and now it says version 2.1. Yes, yeah, so the update was successful. Congratulations. Now, a couple of things. First, remember to go back through and re-enable driver signing. Make sure that malware doesn't get on your computer. And now the last point I want to bring up. This is all under Windows because Godox has not built this firmware update tool for Macintosh. If you're a complete Macintosh environment and you don't have the ability to go find a Windows computer or a neighbor's computer or whatever, you're going to have to install a Windows virtual machine inside your iOS box. That's completely outside the scope of this, but I, I, it's unfathomable to me that Godox has uh, not created iOS native versions of this Flash update tools. They're not that hard to make, and yet uh, I, I feel that most of the photographers out there have at least some Macintoshes and probably their primarily editing tool, and shame on Godox for not doing it. This firmware update feature is important because Godox actually does a very good job of listening to its customers, fixing bugs, adding features where they can to these products after they've been released. And this is a very good thing for us. But to use these cumbersome tools and processes to, to update stuff is just, they're going to lose their lead in this market space, this homogeneous ecosystem to somebody else if they don't get their act together and fix all this stuff. If you found this video interesting and informative, please do like and subscribe down below. I've got other product reviews as well as some bi-weekly photographer's workshops up there on my YouTube channel that might be interesting to you. For Images by Design, I'm Jim Setzer. Have a great day.